Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and this is Cutting Through the Matrix on March the 2nd, 2014. I've been battling the weather, as I'm sure you all have in North America here, at least this part of it and further south too even, because we're having incredibly cold temperatures right into March, it's still going on. It really started in November, really deep, deep, uh, low temperatures and uh, sometimes 40 below up where I am here in near Sudbury. And even on, I think it was Thursday nights, it's dropped down to about 40 below. That's pretty well on both scales, Fahrenheit and centigrade. That's where they kind of meet up together. And uh, last night was, was about 20 odd below, 25 below, perhaps more. And it's to continue, apparently, with these new uh, vortexes and winter blasts and all the rest of the nonsense they tell us as they heavily manipulate the weather. It's amazing the, the world we live in today because outside of the standard news, which is meant to keep you in a box, uh, and where you parrot all the proper uh, authorized uh, talks, etc., the reality when you go deep within uh, the scientific systems and, and communities, they've been working on the weather for an awful, awful long time. And I laugh at all these geoengineering conferences where they're always going to, they're always talking about when they get the authority to start geoengineering uh, and then they go through all the possible side effects, uh, chronic bronchitis, pneumonias because of irritation with uh, all these chemicals they're putting in. They've been doing it all along. And that's how the world is really run. You see, there's different levels of reality, all meant to keep you conned. There always have been, really, but it's more perfected today. We live in a more sophisticated form of slavery, as Charles Galton Darwin said in the 1950s. So we're, we're definitely in it, you see. And that's why they give you major publications and science and so on, to make you believe that you're on the cutting edge of all the knowledge that's out there. And there's nothing else to be had. And you've got all these magazines, popular science, and etc. Lots of them, which which create that illusion, of course. But nothing's further from the truth. And it's the same with politics and everything else, too, of course. Have you noticed that all the news you get today is generally over there somewhere? It's been that for an awful long time. Over there. over Like the old song, eh? Again, from Hollywood, naturally. And you, you're, you've kept focused across the world with the color revolutions. We all know what those things are too. And again, there's nothing new in color revolutions because if you go into the history of Britain, regular history books, you'll find that Britain was, was doing the same thing in, for instance, India in, in the, the early 1800s as they were getting cut in tribes to fight each other so they could come in to keep the peace, you understand. Stabilization, they call it. They don't go to war. They always go to stabilize countries. Or, or, or today is bringing them democracies. And it's all very wonderful, isn't it? And uh, this is how they push it across to us. But meanwhile, they foment the problem in the first place. And they get peoples who haven't been fighting t together for, for maybe a thousand years. They fight each other. Uh, and then they go in and get what they want. And they always want something. And generally, it's pretty well everything. But they want something. And it's control over not just the resources, but also it's control over the minds of the public. So they're as brainwashed as you are. They want a world standard education system. For everyone, so, so that everyone gets the same brainwashing. So if we go to Tokyo or somewhere else, you get the same uh, pat replies to the reasons why things are happening. And uh, and then, of course, no one can then think outside the box. That's the idea. It's rather clever, really. But most folk are trained, as, we're all trained, actually, to, to believe what they we're told. Because after all, why would anybody want to lie to you? This comes from the old idea, especially in Christianity, to, to, to be trusting to be trusting. And of course, Christianity was, was used, especially in, in the, the 20th century, big time, uh, by the powers and big foundations that plan to run the world and eventually take over from governments as we know them. And they've had their articles out in the papers saying it's time for them to step in uh, from, the, from websites such as the Council on Foreign Relations. It's time for the big philanthropies to, to move in and take the rightful place as co-rulers and, and planners in, in, a, in a system which um, is non-democratic in a sense. So we're being prepared for it. We hear NGO leaders all the time on the news. Uh, and so-called charitable foundations are behind them, funding it all. And, of course, the history is all out there with old John, Rockef John D. Rockefeller and all the things that he got up to, too.
uh, he also was a Darwinist as well, as you know, a social Darwinist who believed in social planning, where the elite, the intelligentsia, would plan the lives for everyone else. And today you get the great, the big society in Britain, the great society of Cameron, which is communitarianism. Uh, this very old plan is all coming to fruition as we live, of course. The U.S. is getting printed gradually and eventually they'll tax you off the road or price you off the road with your vehicles. They don't like to ban you. They like to make it impossible for you to function anymore. And that's their way of coercing you into something. So they can write their own history books, because they always do, and say that people accepted this. Well, you have to accept it when you have no option, you see. So that's how history is written. We're coerced into things. They don't forbid you to do things. They simply make it impossible to function unless you join them and you do what you're told. That's as simple as that. I'm cutting through a lot of stuff in, in, in a short space of time because I don't like to go over all this stuff that you should all know anyway. And the, the problem too, even with the Patriot Movement, as they want to call it still, I don't know why, but they call it the Patriot Movement, is, is that they keep you focused simply parting what the mainstream news is telling you to look at. So you're, you're just looking at the, the colour revolutions, which are going on, of course. Uh, over in Ukraine and other places too, always, always ongoing as they take down country after country, put in their, their puppets which are already installed, are ready, ready to be installed and trained for their parts and bring in this unified world of, of a planned society, you see, which is awfully lucrative to those involved in it because um, for all charitable works, etc., the big foundations believe in massive profits for their own high members. But they do believe in a world where you'll have big uh, international corporations with all their chains of stores and chains of everything and chains of factories and chains of farms and the super farm stuff that they have, uh, these big agri-food businesses. They'll run the world for you, you see. No private businesses to be, small private businesses to be allowed in the future. And they bring you into this gradually. Now, the reason that the big movements which came out of, they were visible even in the French Revolution, uh, and again, it's a long history, which is never told, actually. Some of it can't be told today, but there's a long history as, as the forces behind these revolutions got into action and got uh, underway to make all this happen. And you even find in this overdone thing called Weishaupt, Adam Weishaupt and the Illuminati stuff, you're, you're, there was, they were one small group, by the way. All working. There's many of the same groups across the world, uh, and Weishaupt was a bit big for his boots and couldn't keep his mouth shut. But the fact is, they're on the go still today. And the idea was to bring in a planned society again. It's always the same thing. Planned society, the intelligentsia rule, uh, those who prove their intelligentsia, not just through academia, but also from acquiring massive wealth and holding on to it for a few generations is a proof that's your entry for the children into the next generation of rulership. That's what it's all about. And they have the scientists on board with them. They actually have their categories of, of those who run industry for the world and those who are the scientific helpers. In fact, Julian Huxley went through that in one of his talks, that he and his family and his family lineage were hereditary members of the scientific uh, elite who helped him manipulate the psychological processes of the general public to go along with all of this too. So, you're living through a planned agenda, which is awfully boring at times, of repetition. And you see, hell is repetition. But uh, to keep parroting on and parroting on what they're doing today is a technique to destabilize your psyche uh, and bring you down, crashing to the ground. When I was doing uh, so many talks uh, every week, and going over the news, the purpose wasn't to terrify you, as you know. The purpose was to explain why these things were happening and filling in all the blank bits that the, the media conveniently left out. It's not difficult to understand once you see the process and it play. Now, the U.S. was to be used as the big battering ram to bring the rest of the world in to this global system, the planned economy, the planned society, from who should get born, who should not get born, and uh, the social Darwinistic uh, theory that they, they brought into it. Uh, and Rockefeller, of course, was all on board with that, the social Darwinism idea, where he himself certainly had his ideas of how the people should be run, uh, who should order their lives, how to order their lives. And eugenics, of course, is a big part of it, too. They funded, the Rockefellers funded the Cold Springs Harbor experiments and so on in eugenics and started the, the award system 
for the monthly uh, Americans family of of the of the month uh, awards way back in the twenties, I think it was. So you, it's interesting to see that every group you see that you belong to, if you belong to anything at all, uh, whether it's a religious group or whatever, it was taken over an awful long time ago. In fact, the history of the U.S. is fascinating when it comes to religion because you get the standard authorized version, uh, cleaned up, of course, that's the authorized version of all the untidy stuff they don't want you to know. There's a lot of groups came into the U.S., many, many groups who were, already, who were subversive, uh, they weren't just getting persecuted because of religion or something. It's because they were subversive and revolutionary in their thinking. Many of them came in with Marxist ideas and facts in the late 1800s and were very, very powerful, very vocal in the, in the early 1900s and 1920s, especially in places like New York. Mass meetings in the streets, lots of old newspapers out at the time, uh, their speeches, and, uh, and and they weren't the only group. You, even before that, you had communities coming in that joined uh, uh, certain and created certain Christian sects or guys of Christian sects. In fact, so that it was all for social change, particular types of change. And when you look at them all, it's always the same kind of change thereafter. Once again, social Darwinistic uh, management of the public from birth to death, who should live, who should die, do they need you down the road to, to, to work in their system, just like George Bernard Shaw said. They said, you have to come to us eventually uh, to see if we should let you live or die. Why should we keep you alive? In other words, what use are you to us? That was the purpose of all. You had to have purpose in order to be, to be fed and kept alive or even to be born. And we're getting to that stage now, the completion of it all. Because, you see, genera- it's intergenerational uh, brainwashing of acceptance by pushing the envelope. Always pushing the envelope a little bit more until... Not just the parents, when it comes to the sexual thing, and this is one part of it, not just uh, the parents will sit with the child now and let certain things go and comedy shows that perhaps they shouldn't because the parents themselves have been contaminated in their turn and, and their parents before them as well. So you can have three or four generations sitting, uh, sitting on the same couch watching television and they've all been uh, contaminated till everything on television is pretty gross and, and same repeti- repetitive type of grossness as well which also dehumanizes the public into another animal. You laugh at that because you're laughing at yourselves as animals, you see. And with animals, you can do what you want. And then you have the, all the economic specialists telling you about, oh, this great science of economics, which no one apparently understands because we keep getting plundered twice a century by the big bankers, you see. And they tell you how they're going to cut back on everything, including uh, treatment for health care, etc., which is well underway in Britain, that's a flagship for the U.S. because the U.S. actually copied uh, the British system according to the RAND Corporation, which was employed to do the surveys and the best system for them to adopt uh, according to what they wanted to do, and they said the British system is is the one they'd adopt. So everything works together. Uh, Democracy doesn't ever come into the picture on anything, actually, uh, because the public never have a say in all the big important events that are planned for their lifetimes. And when you read, understand and you read so many of the big boys involved in pushing all of this stuff, you find you're just living through a script. And it's awfully boring, terribly boring. So why should you get all hot and bothered when, when they fulfill a, a certain part of it? After all, if you're expecting it, and they told you about it years ago, expect it to happen because that's what you're living through. It's a planned agenda with timetables for certain implementation of different parts of it, you see. Now, I'm sure all of you have friends out there who parrot the stuff from television and they come up with certain topics or even arguments which they've adopted from the experts, you know, that class of experts that they give you to, to believe in. And uh, and they'll say, well, I guess they have to ration health care and it's so expensive and we're going to austerity and... But they never complain about the cost of wars. I mean, wars go on all the time for the big boys. The army, in fact, the whole country is just their private business, really. We're all part of their private enterprise. But they use your money to pay for all the wars, which they use for personal gain, naturally. Since they have to be in control of all uh, resources across the world, it's personal gain for them. 
and they're obviously really good at propaganda. They're, they're, they're doing it all, you say, view from disaster. And once they have the resources in those countries, uh, it's not to... You see, I used to work, the people would say, well, I get, well, we need the oil, you know. So, so in the other, you're starting to rationalize plunder. But of course, it's not going to you. The oil is then sold to other countries like China. That's where the big boys arranged to sell it to uh, when they took over Iraq. But the big boys are in there, the Shell and BP and all the rest of them, because Tony Blair came out afterwards that he'd had meetings with all these companies before the Iraqi war where they agreed to divvy it up amongst those boys. The taxpayer would fund all the operations for war, pay for the clean-up, and even build them new refineries. That's awfully nice of us, isn't it? Well, that's democracy, you see. So try not to allow yourself to be panicked by the constant hype and, and repetition of things that they're telling you to be outraged about. After all, there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing. What are you going to do? Please stop putting missiles around Russia and, and scaring the public with retaliation. Uh, please stop putting color revolutions into uh, Ukraine or, or the next country after that or the whole bunch of countries you're doing it to at the same time. Please stop it. Thank you very much. So, so what are you going to do? Get ulcers, griping over it? You see, we don't have democracy, as I say. You'll never hear the politicians uh, bring up NAFTA, the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreements, all these free trade deals, which is not free trade at all. It's, it's selected trade for big corporations and elimination of any, any comp competition. That's what it is. And we have to pay those third world countries, the emerging nations, just that we're still paying China, by the way, uh, to, to, to rise up to a first world status. We, we pay them to do that. We build their hospitals once we sign these agreements. We give them all this cash. It's a one-way street. Because it's a big, big plan and it's nothing to do with benefiting you. I can remember when they pushed the EU uh, for, for complete integration and they gave the folk the, the choice uh, to vote yes or no. And they said to every country, the same hype, massive marketing campaigns with the top marketing companies, advertising companies, to brainwash the public and terrify them. Oh, if you don't join, you'll be left behind. If you do join, there'll be jobs, 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 and utopia. Well, bingo, where are they now in Europe? You see, you're always getting lied to because there's always a different agenda behind it all. Very, very clever huge agenda with lots of groups all working in this pyramid structure and taking command from the guy at the top. That's how it works. But meanwhile, you get one or two targets to pick and yell at, and, and what does it do? Nothing at all. If it wasn't that guy, they'd pick it. They'd use someone else to do it. So these guys are just front men in a sense who know their role, just like a politician or top politicians know their role. And their, their role is to be unpopular and to have tomatoes thrown at them. And then they give you another target after that. It's a very simple technique. Very old too, isn't it? Very, very old. Boring, boring technique. So you're living through an agenda. Don't get outraged over things because it doesn't... Outrage doesn't win anything. It never has anything changed. Oh, I'm outraged. Stop that. Thank you. It doesn't work. So you have to get other other methods of doing it. And again, too, you already said to yourself, why do, why do those who have the power and the following who are p pushing outrage not get something organized to really combat something uh, in a sphere uh, uh, with enough political clout to do something to actually they really can't ignore you? It doesn't happen. You ever ask yourself why it doesn't happen? It's up to you to figure that out. And again, to all the, the remember what Bernays said, Edward Bernays, he said uh, in his own writings, if you want to take something over, even monopolize something, whatever it happens to be, and you're starting from scratch, don't, don't, he said, uh, um, try to start things literally from scratch. Look for existing organizations. If you don't have one, you create them but you pretend you're not associated with them. And then the people will follow them because they'll become the leaders, you see. But existing organizations you would use to the maximum, including all the churches, they're fantastic for that. 
And he said you have to go and approach the leaders of these people. It doesn't matter about the followers, or as George Orwell called them, the proles. The proles don't count, he said. They're just a collapse. They're just trained seals who are the, the yay, yay uh, crowd. Ra, ra, ra for the leaders. So that's how they manage the general population. That's why they have all these NGOs, non-governmental organizations out there, all paid for very handsomely for the leaders, by the way, not for the followers, but the leaders, uh, from the big foundations. And the foundations have an incredible history, very well organized, coordinated on a massive scale, often thought to be communist, in fact, according to the Rees Commission from the 1950s because their goals under social Darwinism are the same. They are the same because they want a planned society, birth to death, uh, monitoring by government at every stage of your life, every day of your life, in fact, and school to work, of course, where they simply test you for a few abilities for very young, and they'll say he's been a, he'll be a good plumber, a good electrician, whatever, and that's all you'll be trained in. You don't need geography, history, or any, anything else. That's the plan for the future. And it's already being implemented, too. And as I say, you have no say in any of it at all. Because what you're fighting is a, a complete system with literally maybe thousands of think tanks. Thousands of them. Full-time very intelligently uh, selected guys in it, think tanks, lots of them who have nothing to do but work on each simple problem of their big agenda and how to get the public and to coerce and manipulate and nudge the public along with a big plan in every possible aspect of life. So each one is specialized in a specific part of it and many think tanks are working on the, the, the second or third or fourth or fifth stage after the present as the present one still working on the present, if you understand what I'm saying. That's what you're up against. How can you possibly combat that by being outraged with things that are happening this very moment, which will be gone tomorrow or the next week or whatever, as you turn your attention onto the next crisis? real or, or possible or, or fake, whatever. I've often said the main thing you have to do is to, yeah, educate yourself by yourself. All the information is out there if you're guided towards it. Something will guide you towards it or drive you. I call it driving you towards something. If, if it's so important, to you, you'll be driven sometimes in a crazy way, in fact, until it'll take over your life as you're driven to find out the whys. And once you understand the whys, then you understand what's coming. When you understand what's coming, you don't panic. You don't panic. It's expected to happen. So don't let uh, others manipulate you into the fear mode, which actually disables you. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people who exploit you as well and sell you all kinds of things for the sky is falling scenarios because they make an awful lot of money at it. There's a lot of people in this world, and we live in this materialistic system. They can be so easily exploited by the unscrupulous or even psychopathic types as well. Because the psychopath smells which way the wind is going for opportunities, and he, he, he'll be there. He'll be there where there's an opportunity for him to pirate everyone else's stuff too. And, and once he goes, the, he gets the mantras right, uh, the people will, will listen and then exploit you, you see. There's lots of groups out there doing that kind of thing too. And the same thing happens with the NGOs, only they're taught what they're doing. They know what they're doing uh, at the top in the big think tanks. They know how to manipulate you, create the crisis, create the fear or the impression or, or, or the techniques of fear. And, um, I call them techniques of fear. You don't, you don't need a crisis fear state to come upon you. And here's a little secret here too, for those who don't know. Many moons ago, the behaviorists got into studying fear. Fear itself is a method of total control for compliance amongst the public. 
And every country was involved in these. In fact, during the Cold War, all the top scientists, by the way, shared everything to their so-called enemies. It was all nonsense. And they said, how can we create fear? For instance, here's, a, here's a, an example. If you're faced with a tiger in the jungle, uh, you're going to have sudden fear with all the responses that fear brings, you see. The fight or flight syndrome. The parasympathetic nervous system kicks in all of that. You might empty your bladder or even worse in some people. And then you, you vamoose as fast as you can or you become frozen and you get eaten, you see. There's different responses of different people as to how they react to it. But they, they, they noted all the different sensations which come with the, the state of total fear where you're faced with imminent death, for instance. And... It was interesting from those who ran Russia. I always say those who ran it because a lot of them didn't come from Russia. But the fact is, those who ran Russia, uh, they did a lot of experiments which they couldn't, well, at least they couldn't openly so much do in the West because when you're killing your subjects, like humans, it's not too popular. Uh, and again, you make you that outrage thing that goes nowhere. But you find that um, they found if they could simulate, simulate, uh, this, the, the, the symptoms, which generally come secondarily to, to the actual instigator, the motive, the, the, the object that terrifies you. you know, all these symptoms uh, kick in where you, your, your pupils will dilate, more light comes in for fl fight and flight, so blood pressure changes, your heart goes up, adrenaline gets shot in. So if they could make these things happen through other techniques, even electronically, then you would go into the same state of fear as though you were facing a tiger without a tiger being present. This is a well understood science. And I could yap on for an awful long time, days and weeks maybe, about all the studies that were done. However, it's used on you today. Through television, through computer, through, I'm certain, as Brzezinski was talking about, about the this technique where they could literally uh, go across a whole continent with uh, electromagnetic uh, waves, etc. Uh, harp technologies, you might call them, Wi-Fi is included in that, and, and, and create these same side effects, which would make the whole nation anxious or very depressed, or even make you so relaxed when you shouldn't be relaxed, perhaps, uh, and, and manipulate the public. These are warfare techniques. And we live in an age of advanced science, even during the Cold War, the front guys would tell you those who win this war will be the leaders in very advanced sciences. Well, it hasn't stopped, folk. And all those experiments that do used during the Cold War and the media, they're all being used on you today. You see? From the simple techniques of just hype. Uh, I could hit you with a thousand stories a day uh, until you're quivering under your kitchen table in total breakdown and panic. But I don't, because that disables you. That's a warfare technique. I've said, I keep saying it over and over, the average person, the average, I'm well, even a person who's, who's got more stamina could perhaps handle uh, two, crisis, two major crises at one time, maybe a third, a little bit, without cracking, as long as they're not prolonged. But more than that, you crack up. So if I were to tell you, but worry about this, 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 today, just for today's news, uh, you're going to go into a panic mode, fear mode. Uh, you'll sound like a loony to your friends. You'll look like a, a loony to your friends. And you get nothing done. In fact, you won't even get your basic, essential daily living done. You'll, you'll start to fall and break down. So don't go there. It's a, it's a weaponized system. As I say, too, with Wi-Fi, etc., it's still ongoing. So much money, has, even at top universities, are still experimenting with these Wi-Fi waves and electromagnetic energy policies, etc. Uh, the unified field, as I want to call it, two passengers into that at Laurentian University in Canada here. And he thinks it's wonderful when we'll all feel the pain of someone in Africa who's starving. Well, who gives him the right to feel, make us all feel the pain of somebody in Africa? And why Africa? You understand? When they have the ability to, to change your mood, emotion, and so on, without your consent either. I mean, who's going to consent to be manipulated by someone else? Uh, the game's over. It's over, folks. 
You won't know whose thoughts you have, who gave them to you. Uh, reinforced again by the propaganda media, by an invisible energy that's all around you, uh, where, again, an elite are saying, well, make them feel this, feel that, and so on. And they'll couple that with the news that you're hearing. You see? This is their, their goal for the, a peaceful planet. I always think of the fake communist system. And I mean, I say fake because a lot of real communists, beneath followers are always real, generally, you see? They're fanatics. But the leaders always know what they're doing and how they kept going over this, this future utopia that never arrived in the Soviet Union. It wasn't meant to arrive in the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was just one generation with you, a 70-odd year generation, as Lenin said. It would merge with the West. And the system would become not quite capitalist, not quite communist. They now call it socialist, but it's a social Darwinism run by the elites because the foundations were behind all of these movements for centuries, by the way. Now, a foundation can set a goal. Supposing you have a smaller foundation with only a few billion just to throw around every year. That's a small one. And that, that's got one task to change, supposing it was to change all of us into women or something, all men into women. This is a topic here. Uh, you know. They could say, well, this might take three generations. So you, they can employ, hire, retire, employ, hire, retire, and, and, um, and, and, and fire and all the rest of it, but keep on the same agenda for generations as they change society's mores, morales, and everything else, and viewpoints until they get what they want. So that one thing can be achieved. It doesn't change. It's there regardless of political parties, regardless of wars, or anything else you think might, might interfere, but they don't interfere, and they get the job done. Then you have the big, big foundations with trillions to slush around on all these pressure groups, all fighting for whatever is going to destroy the old to bring in the new. And then they're funding, uh, many of these foundations fund hundreds and hundreds of other foundations. They they're just put the money out there, you see. Tax exempt too, of course. So we're going through this, as I say, and people still think they can go and vote, and somehow it's going to change something. Your politician is going to is not going to mention the, the NAFTA morphing into the the, the Trans Pacific Partnership by its election time. Your local one won't do it either. Uh, so what's the point? They'll talk about jobs, unemployment, because we're all everybody's worried about surviving. Uh, education. Of course, now they're bringing in different rights for different minority groups and so on, or they'll create new minority groups that didn't know there were one. And, and, and that's how they do things, to keep you uh, focused on other things. But they never, ever talk about the big, big plans they have for you down the roads. They're often not even implemented by them, so to speak. They're implemented by bureaucracies that are functioning as almost separate governments today. They create policies, not laws, but policies, and then it's, it's implemented, and that's that. You're also prompted to change your opinions on things by very careful, psychological, uh, psychologically prepared uh, uh, documentaries, and very repetitive ones, all similar to, to change your, 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 your way you, you see something. Uh, and of course, they never. And, you know, and the way to do it is simply by the mission of of another side of any story. That, that's how you bring someone to, to the desired conclusions. And then, when your peer group starts parroting it, and they've even done all the studies naturally as to what classes adopt it quickest, and they found that the ones who have the most education are quicker to adopt new policies and new ways of being, behaving, condemning, or, or whatever it happens to be. We are the most studied species on the planet. It's incredible. Incredible. And the public are kept so busy or worrying and scurrying that they don't even know that most of what they think is their mind is not theirs at all. Their opinions are not theirs. Their behavior isn't even theirs. Even their hobbies often aren't theirs either. They're approved and pushed. Stuff that was known thousands of years ago comes from a small elite who understand these sciences because sciences like this have to do with manipulation of the human being are never lost. They are so valuable. They're more precious than anything else on the planet. 
Once you have that under under wraps, you can get all the people working for you uh, like slaves. And you can take most of their income from them and live higher than they'll ever, ever imagine. That's, that's what it's about. Now, those at the top, as uh, Albert Pike said, he says, make no apologies for nature. And by that, they mean social Darwinism to an extent uh, where, where they, they, they're clever, cunning, and in the laws of nature, the jungle, uh, they end up at the top because they're ruthless and cunning and intelligent. They know how to manipulate people, sway the crowds, uh, get them to follow, uh, even into wars and all the rest. Actually, I shouldn't say follow because um, these big boys who plan it all never go to war themselves. They just reap in the benefits. In fact, you know, I've mentioned all the different quotes from people like Kissinger and, and so on who said that the, the American soldiers are dumb, stupid animals who are used for foreign policy. Now, I, I'll tell you something, though. I don't disagree with what he said, actually. Because they're certainly dumb and stupid because to get the most basic propaganda as to why they should go off and kill people, they don't know. Very basic stuff. And they never know the, the full agenda. And unfortunately, they, they don't even care about what the, the, the real agenda is. Because they're very young guys. One soldier told me uh, that uh, it seemed to him he was... Brought up in Britain, but he said that he, one day he was like running around the trees with his pals playing cowboys and Indians. And before you know it, there they are with the real thing and the weapons and all that being being more macho and, and like the movie stars and all again, all co- emulating fiction, you see. Uh, and that's why they pick young guys. During World War One, at one point when they had the big uh, lines of trenches across the country in Europe, the, there was a stalemate. Uh, so many had died. They were just throwing in hordes of people, wave after wave, from both sides until they were getting mowed down with machine guns uh, that had to come on line, basically, just, just in time for that war by Mr. Vickers. Uh, Lord, he was made Lord Vickers for that contribution to slaughter. And his counterpart, too, had a counterpart who helped, I think he lived in Switzerland, and they made them in Switzerland and sold them to both sides, Maxim, Henry Maxim. Uh, so they, they sold a version for the British and the French, another version for the Germans. Uh, and I could go on with all these stories, too, but I won't bother. But the fact is, uh, they found that they came to a stalemate in the trenches for, for about a year or so. What they f- now, they did their surveys, and in came the early behaviorists, and they did their surveys to find out why weren't they still jumping into their trenches and doing heroics and slaughtering people and getting killed. And they found that the guys who were mainly left in the trenches after regiment after regiment were getting slaughtered were, were a bit older, a few years older. And they were, they were a bit wiser, and that their propaganda and their, child, their childhood mentality was disappearing. Uh, uh, they realized that bullets, unlike the, even the early movies in the black and white silence, uh, didn't go for the, di- didn't miss the good-looking guys, and didn't miss guys who were nicer. And, no, they, they killed anybody at all. So the hero didn't matter. There was no heroes with a bullet he- heading towards you. It doesn't happen that way in reality. Young guys were still full of, again, their, their heroes and all the novels and stage plays that they'd seen. Uh, and and if you're brave and, and all that, then and, and very gallant, uh, bullets always miss you. So what they did, they spent uh, about six months training new recruits in Canada, and they fed them the most horrific uh, stories about the Germans bayoneting babies and all that stuff, which they always rehash every so often. And uh, they tried that with Iraqis too later on too with Kuwait. But anyway. Uh, and sure enough, they trained them, and they go, oh, and these young guys were getting tremendous brainwashing and stories about heroism, and they came in, and sure enough, uh, they put them in the trenches, and they ran off by the herds to get slaughtered again, too, and get the whole killing thing going again. That's how perfect this system is. That's how perfect it is. If you're looking for honor in that, don't look to the guys who are above you manipulating it all, because there's no honor at all. None of whatsoever. And and we are the proles. We are the, the proles. Like George Orwell said, the proles don't count because the proles don't know reality. They really don't know reality. And young guys having a tribal instinct naturally uh, want to be warriors, so they always pick the young guys to go and do all the slaughtering.
so the old guys can reap the benefits and the taxpayer pays for the cost of it. That's the real world we live in. And geopolitics and everything else. Always on the go. Always on the go. And believe you me, when they bring in the world system and there's no more foreign enemies to fight, they always have to have terrorism all throughout the system. Same with the Soviet Union. Once the borders were all closed in the Soviet system, then they had to get an enemy at home to justify the massive police state that they had, an authoritarian system, and keep the people terrified. So you had counter-revolutionaries at home. Today, in the West, as terrorists everywhere, apparently. Old, old techniques. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Now, I'm sorry to prattle on like this, but uh, I don't prepare my talks, as you all know. And I'll just, just spout off the top of my head about things and see how things really are without getting you all panicked and terrified and, and focusing you on, or oh, look here in the world today and be very, very afraid, folks, or look there and be terrified. Uh, what does that achieve? What does that accomplish apart from disabling you? You have to find out who you are. That's a difficult job for a lot of people who have never clued in till later because you almost have to dismiss everything you ever believed in. Certainly, the way that you believed in things have to, has to be looked at again. Absolutely. Because there's not an organization out there that isn't used. Many knowingly and other ones unwittingly. Because to be a follower, you can be set up to be a patsy. Just being conned itself means you're all patsies if you just follow, follow, follow and never question. I've never known a country or this system or, or, or this agenda to falter by guys just yelling their, their outrage at something. It doesn't happen. It does not happen. It's maybe a minor safety valve uh, to blow off steam. That's all it accomplishes. Yeah, we told them, we told them, yeah. So what? Like they don't know? What do you do? In the system Well can you be in the system Well you have no option to, But to be in the system So at least you can come to the understanding Of the forces behind it all How uh, tremendous work Goes into Manipulating you on a daily basis Tremendous work I mean you conform To the, the general herd As you say Awfully important That's why everyone spied on I keep telling people who give me the pad answer, well, I don't care if they're looking at me, I've got nothing to hide. Well, the fact is, even even that person got, is of, of awful great interest to, to all the statisticians out there that are constantly running tests on us all and, and, and quantifying this group and that group and who, who, who will belong to, how can you put this person in a group at all, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this, these ones are safe, these, these ones are on the, on the border, in uh, you know, the line. Uh, yada yada yada. It, it's all oh, oh, incredible, and all that academia is on board with this, getting huge grants from the big foundations again to do all these studies. And your government goes along to allow all, the, all this information from the NAC be handed over to them, the high professors and so on. They're making a fortune at this to make sure that you stay, you know, safe and pretty stupid and predictable. You can't run a world unless you're all incredibly predictable. And even the Joe Blow that says, I don't care, blah, blah, I'm doing nothing wrong. Uh, if he does something out of the ordinary, they want to know why. Why is he suddenly looking at this? Why is he sudden, suddenly um, reading these articles? Why, you see? Because that gets added to your personality profile, updated, and they want to know. And it's so easy for them today because look at your cluster of friends and all, and all these sock puppets that you yap to. And, um, and they see where it's all going. With you, they've got to know where it's going with you. You must, you must be predictable. And if you're not, they want to know why. Down the roads, you will have mandatory psychiatric visits, either to a place you're told to go to, or they'll come to you. We talked about this almost a hundred years ago, in, in, in George Bernard Shaw's day, when they started up the Fabian Society. There's nothing new under the sun. Literally, is nothing new under the sun. What is maybe newer is the more perfected system of information gathering on you, observation, 
and the techniques employed are, are literally so it's instantaneous across the world. They're all getting the same news, authorised news, same prattle, getting their minds shaped to correct, to believe everything in the proper way, the ones that authorised. And, um, and at the moment you've got some dissent here and there, but you have no real opposition to anything because opposition, as the communists always knew, had to be organised. That was a big scream at one time when they went into a new place, organise, organise, and they'd organise them. And when they joined that system, you joined a communist system, you had to go along with every part of their agenda, even the stuff that made you uncomfortable you did, or you didn't agree with. You had to learn all the slogans, and you listen to all these commies and these parrot the slogans. They can't argue with you on things, they just parrot slogans at you. And they jump into critical theory and smear you, because they can't answer you. And they won't, it's a, it's a religion, you see. But they did know how to organize incredibly well, because it's a very old system, even before you heard the term communism, or even Lenin for that matter. All worked out long before that. And all these techniques are used by what you think are sides, all sides, because all sides at the top work in common to the same goal. Most are oblivious of it. Uh, many folk are happy with uh, I said many years ago that many people will love socialism, this, this uh, Darwinistic socialism, because they won't have to plan anything really in their lives. Maybe what coffee to drink or, or what program to watch tonight to, to, to laugh at or what porn movie they're going to see. But, but that's going to be it. Uh, the big decisions are made, be made by experts and de governmental departments and social workers and psychologists and so on if they have any big problems at all. And then the rest of their time is theirs to go and play. And it won't end there. Because they want to bring down the population. They're already getting people conditioned. Ordinary folk, can, you'll hear them parroting this stuff. Well, you know, there are too many people in the world. And uh, uh, and, and they'll parrot all the stuff they've been brainwashed to believe in. Oh, there's not enough food in the world to feed everybody, which is nonsense too. And, well, people should, uh, if they get sick, maybe, you know, if they, do, if they don't have much of a job or anything, well, they should be the bottom of the list for for helping. These are ordinary people parroting this stuff off now because they, they're watching documentary after documentary that are churned out by the big establishment, and, uh, and they cannot think for themselves. Because the ones who are telling you all this are pretty fit and healthy when they're talking about it. It does not occur to them that they're, they're going to be on the bottom list either for, you know, termination for economic factors, that is. That's where they'll take us eventually. You start with abortion, and you, then, then you step up to post-term abortion, and uh, uh, postpartum abortion, and then you go into the next step, too, of uh, killing off the elderly. That's already been done in some countries. And now I think it's uh, Belgium passed a law to, you can actually terminate children who are terminally ill, and uh, and the folk again, the general public will say, well, yeah, they showed us an awful documentary, and this child looked in pain. Well, yeah, they can make you the child look in pain if they don't want to give many painkillers. It's quite simple, folks. Everything is is to see. Every, everything you see should be analysed from every possible angle, and unfortunately, you should be able to do that naturally without being told. Most folk can't anymore. They've been disabled, and they don't know it. And they'll argue with you. They're perfectly sane, because they really believe they are. And their peer group is much the same as themselves, and that's how you judge your sanity. They'll prattle about the same topics with the same answers, conclusions, as, as you have, because they're all given the same downloads. Scientific downloads, which guide you to the conclusion. Newscasting at one time used to be simply reporting on the facts. The conclusions were up to you. That's the ideal new system. We haven't had that for oh, probably ever, actually. There's been some that would do that at one time. Some papers would do that, but, not, but now they're all the same. They're all big consortiums, and uh, they guide you to the conclusion, the proved conclusion they're supposed to have. And they're awfully devious, too. They will admit omission guides you naturally to the, to the proper conclusion by omitting other facts and the other side of any story. Very simple. Now, I'm not going to prattle on and prattle on here. As I say, I'm just keeping my face in right now to let you know I'm still kicking here. It's still snow shoveling and deep, deep freeze. That's been that since November. Yeah, November. I was hitting the, the 40 blows 
uh, and it's travelled on and off quite frequently right up into the present. If I get 10 below at night, 15 below, uh, that's been a good, that's been a good day. I mean, during the day as well. So we're going through big, big changes, plan changes. There's all kinds of sciences at work right now, at play. We have harp. You can pick up a shortwave radio, go through the bands. You'll hear that the harp frequencies banging away. They're the loudest sounds on the shortwave. Uh, you'll hear them on umpteen different frequencies today. That's part of the unified field idea of manipulation of the brain. Because HARP, was, when they disclosed it, even from the military's point of view, the declassified stuff, they can send a secondary signal. It's a, a carrier signal brings a secondary signal. And the secondary signal can actually manipulate your brain functions quite easily. Proven a long, long time ago. And in the past, if you go into the archive section at cuttingthroughthematrix.com, you'll find talks I've given and links I've put up from some of the scientists involved, who are still involved in it, by the way who talk about this, this, this field technique of, of uh, manipulation of the, of the mind. So you have all kinds of techniques used apart from the simple persuasive techniques of propaganda. Uh, repetition is the most important thing of all. Just keep saying it over and over and, and you start to doubt yourself. Well, if they're all saying the same thing, then I must be wrong. That, that's how it works. That's how it works. So be careful out there. I've said so many times the mind has no firewall. You have to decide what comes in. You're the gatekeeper there. Because what you can bring into your mind can be weaponized and often is. And it just sits there like a little virus and then it starts working on you. But don't become disabled with fear. Think for yourselves. And and don't panic when these overwhelming foundational groups and so on and color revolutions and all the different associations that are funded by your tax money are across the planet causing mayhem in other people's countries don't you, what can you do about it is to say write a nice letter and say please stop thank you very much that's going to do a lot right and take care of yourselves but start thinking for yourself start thinking for yourself there's hardly an item out there that's real as far as it ha the way it's presented to you. Stop taking the world as it's been presented to you. You've got the functioning brain, use it. If, if you've lost it along the way, find it again. You can, you, you've still got an attachment, find your own mind because it's so important. No one else is going to do it for you. Don't hand it over to anybody else. Unless you do like socialism. And hand it over. Hand over the part of your mind that takes care of problems and let the experts deal with the problems and they'll make sure you're the happy little contented person who, who will be taken care of all your life by getting the bare minimum. And they'll keep you immature forever. You'll never grow up. You'll end up, as many have today, with the television generations ending up in old folks' homes who literally have nothing, no wisdom to pass on to anybody else. And that's a sad state of affairs. They can talk about all the TV programs I've watched, for instance, of, I don't know, in the 50s or whatever, to the present, their favorite shows and actors and who married who, but they don't know anything else. They had a mind that was kept in fantasy all their lives. That's terrifying to me. It's terrifying to me that people get up in the morning and the radio is blaring generally with the news. And they drive to work, people drive to work listening to the same stuff. They go to their work, they're caught up in the rush and, and the worry and the scurry. Uh, and off there's background music too in a lot of places. And then they come home, the same thing blaring away. And then they come in and they're zonked out and they get more brainwashing through the news, media and television and all the rest of it. How come all of your time has been so carefully catered to? And you've been taught this is all normal. To understand the reason for it all is they cannot, no group can bring in this new system. It can be done if folk have their, are in control of their own minds and they decide what they're going to listen to or not listen to anything at all. And unfortunately, people today are, are, are they're terrified to look at them. They're fiddling with their phones wherever they go and texting and all the rest of it. 
sit, there's people sit in restaurants and cafes with their friends. No one's talking anymore. You see, you realize how important it is to keep you from communicating real thoughts, self thoughts, your own thoughts. You realize that that's the most terrifying thing to those who say that, say that they're controlling it all. That's the most terrifying thing. If it's not working on you, why isn't it working on you? If too many folk uh, are affected and it's not working on them anymore, and they're, they're, they're stopping and thinking for themselves in silence. You know that odd thing, that rare thing called silence today? That could be dangerous. You'd have to try and stop that. Or create a, an instant crisis so you're wrapped up thinking you're fighting for your life or something. And they would do that too. But still, you've got to go on and do it. You start thinking for yourselves. Turn everything off once in a while and really sit and think. Sit and think. An odd thing these days, but sit and think for yourself. Stop thinking that the person on television or this professor or that knows more than you do. And he's more important. A while I'm only small, so my thoughts aren't important at all. Stop thinking that way. Stop it. And see what happens. That's freedom for you. Understanding is freedom. Understanding. And not being collapsed by bad news. Or impending doom. The studies were done during the Cold War on the public of both nations, you know, the Soviet system or, or, or group and, and the Western. The, the studies on the fear of being annihilated by nuclear war were so in, intensely studied. It was so important to, te, to, to find the same techniques and use other reasons for terrifying the public. That's what, where it all started, you know. And I used to be amazed when the top scientists from Britain and the U.S. and so would go over to Russia every year for the annual science meetings, meeting the same scientists or opposition over there, working on the same things. Do you really think that was a Cold War? When they said that the ones, the top sciences of any country, those are the ones with the top sciences, superior sciences, would defeat the other. Well, how would they be letting their top scientists share all this information? It was a joke, folks. The goal was always for a world, a world governmental system. The Soviets were for it, and so was the West. The top capitalists were for it. And here we are, it's all been done pretty well, eh? And they've got you stampeding again with this and that. You don't get a minute to breathe here. If you think something's finished over, over, over in that country, bingo, they're hitting another one. Oh, that's all you're here. And when you're completely absorbed with all that, look at all the laws they're ramming down, which take away all the, all the pretense of freedom and rights. So by thinking, at least you can free yourself from it and keep your sanity. Keep your sanity. You've got to keep your sanity. There's nothing else out there. Nothing else out there. And keep warm, by the way, those that are freezing up, because it's one heck of a, of a winter here for sure. And I know for a fact this winter, with the heavy manipulation and the heavy chemical spraying in the skies, are still going on during all these deep freezes and heavy snowstorms. They'll turn it into uh, perpetual rain come the spring here. I guarantee you, and it's going to be flooding. Then that's, so you got another crisis on the go. Then they'll say it's global warming. You know this is going to happen. Oh, we're it was because we're destroying the atmosphere and we're going to pay massive, massive carbon taxes and they'll really hype it up. And it all, it's probably already written up, including all the presentations recorded in advance. And they'll just let it all go at once. And they'll guide us in the right conclusion. Well, we can't keep driving on the roads for goodness sake. Before you know it, you're into, you're into Agenda 21 with no private. Uh, vehicles getting owned anymore, except for the very wealthy who can afford all the incredibly high taxes and, and penalties and carbon taxes and so and CO2, etc, etc, etc. It's rather boring, isn't it, living in this life when you know what's coming down the pike? It really is. But at least you don't, you don't go into shock when the next thing happens. You know it's going, going to come down the pike. So, as I say, sort of, sort of a ranting on here, but I've been busy this, this week, uh, as I say, shoveling and all the rest of it, and try and keep warm, and and to uh, it's bad enough trying to get out a driveway. It's an awful, awful long driveway, but constant snow coming down, 
and the roads too aren't ploughed right to the ground. They're, they're, they always have a, a, a sheet of ice left at the end of it, and you've got to crawl over that sometimes. So uh, I've been awfully, awfully busy doing a lot of things too, and I hope you're all keeping well and keeping your own sanity and finding yourselves, finding yourselves as well, and thinking for yourselves. So from Hamish, who's my wonderful pooch, who's fed up with winter too, by the way, it's good night to me, your God, or your gods, go with you. <laughs>